Hi there, this is a special preview of an episode that you can only find on patreon.com slash Elwood City Limits. Take a listen, and if you like what you hear, consider supporting us for as little as a dollar a month. We appreciate you listening no matter what, but if you want to hear all kinds of extra content, then patreon.com slash Elwood City Limits is the only place to hear that. Until then, here's a little preview of what that extra content sounds like. So, as with every episode, I mean, this there is a pretty definite formula to a lot of Mr. Rogers, but it was interesting to see it with adult eyes here. So, with the start of every episode, Mr. Rogers has a routine. So he comes in the door, and you would have seen this kind of parodied in the Arthur episode. He comes in the door, he's singing, it's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, and and all that kind of stuff. He hangs up the jacket that he's wearing, he puts on a sweater, he takes off his shoes, and he ties up his sneakers while he's singing the song. And can I just say, at this point, I I didn't write a lot of notes for this episode, I never really do for uh, for the kids, Uh, but... After the first note is, of course, the theme song Slaps, which is basically you could copy-paste that into almost every single show we've done on For the Kids thus far. But this one we especially show, so. We haven't hit a truly bad one yet. Um, and then the next note is Mr. Rogers is dripping. okay? So okay. let me talk about this. We got, this is like normcore adjacent. You know, Will, <laughs> everybody's over cottagecore now. I don't know if you heard... Cottage core, oh, really? cottage core was for the summer. Okay, it's all mm-hmm. about dark academia now. Okay, cottage oh, cottage okay. core is over. Everybody's talking about dark academia, and let me tell you something. Mister Rogers kind of got the dark academia look going. We got the we got the classic. Okay, vintage trainers. He's strapping on the vintage trainers, so we're kind of casualizing this kind of dressy look. Okay, we got the zip up sweater, um, and of course. Oxford shirt with the tie pinned down. Uh, got the wide tie going. It's a solid look, Will. We got the pleated slacks. Oh my God, he's serving looks. And he has the confidence to pull it off. A lot of people like can't can't do that. But even right down to the catching the shoe when he's doing the song. Yeah, like it, he... it's like that. It's like that TikTok where people flick the shoe up in the air and then they catch it on their foot <laughs> and they're wearing another outfit. Get out oh. my way! Yeah, it's like I love is... what I wouldn't give to see Mister Rogers do that. Why hasn't anybody done that yet? That is <laughs> that is a free idea just waiting to happen. That's brilliant. Well, brilliant. Um, so of course he and he has a very you know high neighbor. Glad we're together again, which is, you know, kind of hits you in the right place. So this particular one, he's talking about how he has this box with him when he comes in. And it's a box with a a doll of Mr. McFeely, who is one of the recurring characters on the show. Do you know, did you know who he meant by Mr. McFeely initially? No, I, again, I'm not super familiar with, uh, I'm even less familiar with the kind of extended Mr. Rogers universe. I, I really only knew kind of Mr. Rogers himself and I think the king, um, but I inferred pretty quickly who Mr. McFeely was. I was like, oh, here comes the mailman. He's the speedy delivery man. He's a recurring character who's played by David Newell, who did public relations for Fred Rogers Productions, which was the studio that eventually came out of this. He's still alive, Mr. McFeely. He's in his 80s. And it seems like even after the show was over, a lot of what he did was kind of going around and spreading the good word of Mr. Rogers. There's even a documentary about David Newell, the guy who played Mr. McFeely. So I I think I'd actually like to like to check that out. And so one of the things we're talking about is Mr. Rogers says, you know, there's a lot of great things that people can do with their hands without hurting others. And we get this little montage of mostly children kind of playing, like using their hands. So playing with puppets, washing a car, um, making cookies and stuff like that. So that seems to be very in keeping with the type of content that Fred Rogers wanted to create. He wanted to make... uh, content for kids that encourage them to be active without promoting like violence or anger and i never this was where it hit me the i guess i never realized or remembered the improvisational tone of the show yeah which, that, that was something that i never realized either is because like we were talking about earlier he's got such a uh, kind of um not slow manner of speaking, but deliberate manner of speaking. And, and usually that leads yes. itself to someone reading a script. Uh, it's, it's usually these fast talkers that are doing all this mm. improvisation. So I was surprised to realize that it, it comes off very casual and very earnest. There's a, con- 
there's a confidence to it. It's the fact that he is, he knows how to hold your attention and he knows that he doesn't have to be loud or super fast or even like witty to, to do so. And I mean, he, we talked, we talked a lot about his cadence, but he's also like, he knows where he's going to, he knows how to bring you there. And he knows that he's going to keep your attention that way. So I think that that's a really, like, he's a really uh, sublime performer that way. That kind of confidence a lot of performers can't say that they have in whatever medium you want to, you want to talk about. Uh, he reads a book of illustrations about a big part of the show, which is the land of make-believe. So I don't know about you, but when he went over some of the names in the book, it, like, I it, I wrote here it unlocked a door in my memory. So when he got to talking about characters like Henrietta Pussycat, Daniel Striped Tiger, King Friday, Trolley, I was like, oh, I remember these people. And so again, if, I, and I think this might be an age difference thing, but usually for me, I was like, oh yeah, I remember King Friday. I remember Daniel Striped Tiger, but it's usually in the context of like parodies of Mister Rogers. Like I remember King Friday showing up in right. like a robot chicken sketch. It was almost like the earliest memory I have of remembering things about a television show of like, oh, those are my favorite characters. In fact, I can tell you definitively, my favorite character on the show is Trolley. Oh, wow. Because I loved Trains as a kid. And then whenever Trolley comes around, he uh, it means that we're going to the land of make-believe, which was always my favorite part of the show because it was puppets. And I also really liked hand puppets as a kid. I love puppet shows. Which is interesting now because I feel like I'd probably be the same way. You know, we've talked about this often about how we always kind of didn't like the uh, children's shows that were live action as kids because we wanted the more fantastical animated stuff. But it's funny right. going back and watching this show as an adult uh, with my adult eyes, uh, hindsight's twenty twenty. I kind of, and, and this is again uh, uh, due to the man himself, prefer the Mr. Rogers sections to the uh, Land of Make-Believe sections just because I think I'm so uh, enraptured with his delivery and, and sort of the way he addresses the camera that uh, those moments do a lot more for me than going back into the Land of Make-Believe. Not to just disparage the man of land of make-believe by any means um but that was just something with my adult perspective i noticed okay that'll do it for now but we'll see you next time on elwood city limits or over on patreon.com slash elwood city limits have a great week